Now we've re returned to ancient Ur, and we're looking at uh, an excavation plan of the city and also a satellite view uh, with my little thumbtack that I put in Google Earth. Uh, the areas that are particularly recognizable are the ziggurat, which we're not going to talk about, and the area of the royal graves, which I'm pointing out here with my second green arrow. On the left, what I'm showing you is a plan that depicts most of the major tombs in the royal graves at Ur. And here on that plan is what we're seeing in the detail on the right, the so-called Great Death Pit. And what I want you uh, to notice also is that the, the grave of uh, Lady or Queen Puabi, whose cylinder seal we looked at earlier, uh, is located just right by the Great Death Pit. Uh, this Great Pit was filled with a number of uh, servants, including musicians, who apparently uh, were meant to accompany a, a very important personage into the afterlife. There were 73 people discovered here in all, five men and 68 women, all of them richly de dressed and ornamented with jewelry. And there were also two harps or lyres, and, uh, as well as what appears to be a highly decorated table. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. Here's that great death pit diagram again, and I want to zoom in on this area right here. Uh, you can see that there are two lyres or harps drawn, and then what appear to be sort of two goat-like bodies, and those belong to uh, some sort of a support for an ornamental table. One of those goats is now in the British Museum in London, and the other one is in Philadelphia. And likewise, these two lyres were uh, divided between the two museums, um, and we're going to be looking at the one that is in the University of Pennsylvania Museum. So these are both of our lyres here just in case you couldn't make them out before. Before we move to the piece that is in the University of Pennsylvania Museum, I want to show you the other lyre because it's actually in a better state of repair. Um, and you can see that it still includes a number of its original tuning pins. So what I'm showing you on the right is the original excavation photograph that was taken back in the 20s when these royal graves were excavated. And then uh, in the detail on the left, you can see a close-up of the bullhead uh, decorating the, the sound box and then some of the inlay work down below. Uh, and this is the, the lyre that's in the British Museum. Now we're looking at the, uh, the lyre that is in the University of Pennsylvania Archaeological Museum in Philadelphia. And as you can see, we don't have quite as good of a survival as we did with the silver lyre uh, that is now in London. Uh, we know we don't have the entire body of the lyre, but rather a reconstruction of uh, the sound box and then some inlay from the front of the sound box and this wonderful bull's head that decorated the lyre originally. And of course, that has been restored as well. Uh, the, the wood core uh, for the bull's head is, uh, I believe, modern wood at this point. <clears throat> but everything else is original. The, uh, this bull is truly extraordinary. And I want you to notice just the incredible workmanship on the beard, which is made of lapis lazuli. Bulls are very important in the Sumerian tradition. Uh, the, the moon god, uh, Sin, or Nana, depending on which version you're reading, he has one name or the other, uh, was, had the symbol of a bull, and that was because the, the horns of a bull resemble a crescent moon. Uh, there were also other gods that were associated with bulls, like Marduk uh, in Babylon uh, had some associated association with bulls. And of course, Adad, the storm god, had association with bulls as well. 
And bulls were also traditionally associated with power in the ancient world. Uh, Egyptian rulers would wear a symbolic bull's tail around their waist in order to show the power that they had. And similarly, in the ancient Near East, rulers would often have uh, bull horns decorating their headdresses uh, and their crowns as a sign of their earthly power. Beards, too, were also uh, an important symbol of power. And so here we have uh, the power symbol of this bull um, and this, this symbol that also is associated with royalty uh, in this incredibly expensive, difficult-to-work lapis lazuli stone. And if you look at the detail on the right, I want you to notice just how beautifully this is done with these uh, wonderful incised parallel wavy lines that come down into three-dimensional spirals that curl upwards. Uh, this is a tremendous amount of work put into this uh, amazing wire. Here's an even closer view, and you can see, first of all, if we look at the eye, uh, the inlay of the eye is really skillfully done with uh, the shell and the lapis meeting up just perfectly. Um, and then if you look at where the, the silver framework is to hold that beard, it looks like bitumen, which is basically like a, a petroleum tar, uh, was used to sort of stick all of this together um, and to mount those pieces of the beard inside of this uh, metal framework so that it would hold down. We'll finish now with just uh, a few final views of this bull. I wanted you to look at the hair, the shaggy hair in between the horns, and you can see that just like the hair on the beard, we have this wonderful intricate work with three-dimensional spiraling curls emerging from these uh, wavy parallel lines incised on the lapis. Um, and just the, the tremendous lifelike quality of these uh, ears and eyes and, and kind of wonderful facial expression on this bull. Um, it truly is a magnificent work. And the lapis here should be uh, seen as a material that was considered to be worthy of the importance of the god being portrayed on this lyre. And of course, this would also have been made for a very important personage, whoever it was uh, whose grave near the great death pit meant that 75 retainers, including musicians, uh, had to accompany them into the afterlife. Um, there's also, close to this same death pit, another corridor that includes an entire chariot with horses and drivers and a bunch of other goods. Um, and these are all very close to Puabi's tomb. So it's possible that with this was all done uh, when she passed away.